I'm Kitty. And I'm Jennifer. And we're the O'Neill Sisters, and we're going to show you how to make a set of really cute bird coasters. This is an image transfer project that uses Mod Podge. And the results are magical. We'll show you every step. Let's get started. To make the coasters, the first thing you need is coasters. We've got four wooden coasters here, and we especially love these because they're cut right through a trunk, and uh, you can see the bark still on the side. Super cool. You'll also need some imagery to do your image transfer with, and these birds, this beautiful bird clip art, we downloaded and then had it printed on a laser printer, and we wanted to make sure it was laser printer and not inkjet printer for this project. We're also using Mod Podge, just regular Mod Podge gloss, and to apply it, we've got a craft paintbrush that's flat and a sponge paintbrush to do the image transfer. The only other things you need are a pair of scissors. These are our favorite little cutting scissors for the bird art. And we've got some little optional feet to put on the back of the coasters. So the first thing you want to do to make these coasters is cut out your bird art. And we had the bird art printed on a laser printer. We actually went to FedEx Kinko's and had them do it because they have a very nice printer. And then we just want to cut out each bird. And we have a couple tips to share with you. We like using these little scissors for this kind of cutting. It's nice because you can get in the little details. Yes. Some people use manicure scissors, but they're curved. And I think they're too small. Yeah, I think they are. They're hard to handle. And the, yeah, the curved part is, uh, you have to work against that curve. Yeah. One thing I like to do is sort of keep my scissors in the same spot and then move the artwork. So my scissors are going to stay here and I'm just going to rotate the artwork a little bit to follow along that line. Rather than me trying to go around the piece of art, I let the artwork rotate into the scissors. I think that's a lot easier. And then these little tiny fine areas, you don't have to be super precise about those. This bird has several toes. I don't need to cut in and out of all those toes. It's just going to be a little bit of white showing perhaps, but it won't make a big difference on this coaster. And if any of your birds have, or your imagery has a gap in it that's white like this little section, you might cut it out. Um, yeah. You can decide whether you want to or not. That one actually is a little bit cream. So. Yeah, this almost matches the color of the yeah. wood, so I think we'll leave that. But yeah. if we wanted to cut that out, the little space between the legs, I would poke the scissors in to make a little hole and start cutting. And I would cut it away with very small cuts That's a when good we try to do it all in one big cut. We also have a couple of our birds are on twigs that have a lot of branches, little fine branches. I think we'll do a little tree trimming there and cut back some of those twigs. It doesn't need all that little fiddly detail, and it might just get ripped during the process. Yeah, for sure. So I have one that's already cut out, this cute little titmouse bird. He's beautiful. We're going to show you how we're going to do the image transfer onto the coaster. To do that, the first thing I like to do is figure out where we want our art on the coaster, yes. because once it's wet, you know, we don't have a lot of time to work. The image is going to be face down, so it's good to remember if you're using any words or anything, oh, yeah. like if you write cheers or something, you have to get it printed reversed exactly. because it is going to be backwards. Yeah, or if you're using a photo of somebody, you'll want to print it backwards or they're going to look a little weird because yeah. you're not used to seeing their mirror image. It's true. So for this, we flipped the bird upside down because that's how he's going to be on yes. our coaster. And because the coaster isn't perfectly round, I want to kind of angle him Kind of so he fits nicely. Yeah. It's a little bit longer on that side. So that's where he's going to go. Okay. So I'm going to remember that. Yes. Put that over there. I'm going to flip this back over. And I'm going to paint the Mod Podge directly onto the front of our art here. And this is why it needs to be on a laser printer and not an inkjet printer. Inkjet uses water-based inks and the Mod Podge is water-based and it'll just smear the inkjet print. But laser toner is a dry kind of toner dry process, and so it really stays on the paper and isn't affected by the Mod Podge. That's right. How's that thickness look? That looks pretty good. You don't want to use a ton because um, you don't want it to be too super wet. It, the Mod Podge will just end up squeezing out yes. uh, the sides or not drying completely, so you don't want to get too much on there. Yeah. Let me move this paper oh, out great. of the Thank way because it's got a little Mod Podge Thank on it. Thank you for that. Sure. So now I've got him. I want to put him face down the way we sort of arranged him yes. there. Like that. And then I'm just going to quickly rub down onto the coaster like that. Yeah. 
making sure it's all the way down, and I'm pressing out any air bubbles or any excess Mod Podge. That's the important thing is that it really has good contact between the paper image and the coaster. It needs really good contact. And there you go. Now we just need to wait for it to dry completely. And we might just use a blow dryer to speed up the yeah. process. Otherwise, you can let it dry for about 24 hours. Yeah. So our image is dry now. And now we get to peel the back off of the image by adding a little bit of water. This is the magic part. So to do that, we've got our foam paintbrush here. I'm just going to wet it a little bit. And then we like to work in sections. Yes. So we're going to start by wetting just this little head here of our bird. Basically, we're going to just dab the water on there until the image starts to show through a little bit. Yeah, it gets a little bit transparent as the paper backing gets moist. And that's how you know that it's ready to be sort of peeled off. It's very gentle work, though. So what I'm doing to peel this backing off is I'm basically very lightly using my finger in a sort of rotating motion. And you'll see that the paper just sort of pills up. It kind of rolls off. And then you can just add a little bit more water to the section if it feels like it's getting dry. And just gently roll that paper backing off of the image. Magically, that Mod Podge, as it has dried, has moved the image over to the wood. And then what you're doing is peeling the paper backing off of the Mod Podge and image. So I'm going to move on to another section rather than continuing to work on that yes. section because I don't want to accidentally overwork it and pull some of that image up. If you get too aggressive in trying to remove that backing, you can actually peel up some of the image, and that's what you don't want to do. So it's better to do this in small sections and do it in passes. So we like to go do sort of one pass, even though we leave a little bit of the white paper behind as we're going. That's okay, we'll let it dry, and then we'll go back and gently remove whatever little pieces of white are still there. What you don't want to do is lose any of your image. That's right. It's nice to do this kind of image transfer onto wood because wood has that grain in it, and um, it allows any imperfections that might happen in the image transfer to kind of look like they were intentional. Yeah. And if you have delicate areas like those little branches or little wingtips or whatever, just be extra careful. And we recommend going with the flow of that, like where this wingtip is, rub it with the flow of the wingtip so you don't accidentally grab that wingtip image right. in the Mod Podge and pull it up. She means don't like rub against yes. that little corner because it might just pull right up. Yeah, those are the, the delicate areas. And then once we seal this, when we're done, yeah. it'll everything will lay down perfectly fine. So you don't yes. need to worry about it, the wear and tear of it as a coaster. Exactly. It's just during this process that's a little, it need to be a little bit delicate. Yeah. We can see all this paper has pulled up in little balls. That looks great. I'm going to add a little more water. Yeah. There. And even... Though we're not we're not even done with the first pass, we can see that we're we have a second pass to do. This is that white paper showing here, so that'll be part of our second pass. That's we'll be right. removing that layer. It's hard to see it when it's still wet. It doesn't the white paper, if any backing's still on there, it kind of is transparent, so it's harder to see. But once it dries, you'll see if you have any areas that are left that have a little bit of white on them. And then you can go back just gently, add a little bit of water with the sponge and rub gently to remove that. So we're just going to keep working like this to get the rest of this um, first layer of the paper pulp off the back of our image. Yes. Then we'll let it dry and look at it again, as Kitty said, and find any areas that have a little more white and wet it again, re-pull it, yeah. pull it off the same way. And then our image transfer will be done. Our coasters are all finished and they turned out great. The last thing we did to finish them off is we added four little feet to the back of each one and we gave them each a nice layer of top coat to protect them and to keep them waterproof as coasters. If you have any questions while you're working on your coasters, go ahead and write in and we'll write you back. Happy crafting! Mm -hmm.